in the chat. Um, and since we are on Instagram and TikTok, your things are going to be, um, did you do your reels or TikTok videos? Um, we were going to do three as a minimum. So put down if you were able to do that. And then any artist reach outs, because our, our big, big goal is to recruit two people and help them get to artists two for our power of two challenge. Um, okay. Oh, did you see what Pristine said, Allison? She said, you are not alone. That. <laughs> uh, you know, I go to the store looking like this. So <laughs> I know. I mean, how old are we now? Like we're past, we're past Karen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. Where is freaking everybody? Hold on. Hold on one second. I'm going to just send out another text reminder. Um, hold on. Come on. Instagram. Wham, starting now. And if you guys have any teammates or friends on your teams, will you just remind them as well? Okay. Okay. So first things first, put in the chat, what are you holding yourself accountable for today? Tell me what the goals that you set last Thursday when you were here and then how you lived up to those goals. If you weren't here last week and weren't able to set accountability goals for yourself last Thursday, I want you to drop in the chat what you did do this last week that you are proud of. Okay, or where you want to do a little bit better next week. All righty, give me one, one more second. Oh, yay. And we got Leslie and Carrie in here too. Hello, ladies. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. So let's look at your guys' wins. Okay, Allison, I did three or four TikToks. Oh, yay. And you shared your why in your Facebook group. That's amazing. A new color match and a customer and one person asked about the artist. Okay. And then I did my second live on Instagram. Wow, pristine. And four reels. I saw that one you did that was incredible. Um, yes, Raquel is definitely blossoming into her own. I saw your reels as well. And hi, Leslie and Carrie. Thank you guys for shop gosh, shopping on. <laughs> it's Friday. I need to start moving these whams to Mondays when my brain is fresh because by Fridays it's fried. It's fried day. Ah. <laughs> okay. So what I want you guys to do is what we're gonna we're gonna jump into our mindset work. What that's what we're that's what we're here for. That's our whole goal. Um and so I want somebody to um come off mute and um, I need you to come off mute and share one thing that you feel like you are struggling with. 
Um, if you don't know, like if you're just like, Jessica, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know what I don't even know. And I don't even know. I just know I'm not where I want to be. And I want to fix that. I just need somebody to come off mute and, and let us kind of pick you apart. You can pick me apart because I don't know anything. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, I mean, well, let's actually start. Let, let me backtrack a little bit. Let's actually start from like a positive place of where you've had a win. So if I go back to what you wrote in the thing, you completed three or four TikToks um, and you shared your why in your Facebook group. So what I need you to tell me now, um, and we're going to start there is how does that make you feel? Like when you're looking back at the past week from last Friday, when we were last year to now, and you know, like what you've done, tell me how you're feeling today. Oh, it's her moment. <laughs> extremely stressed out. <laughs> You're um, extremely stressed out. Okay. We it, can all relate to that. <laughs> it's good. No, I got a lot going on in my head. Um, no, last week, well, I guess this week has been good. Um, one of the videos I did was just, you know, a goofy video. And I got almost 1,200 views. 12 or 14 shares <laughs> and I got um like 10 or 15 new followers I only have 25 but hey it's up from what it was that's amazing, that's amazing. Are trying to break in. okay so all those were facts tell me how, how do you feel about that I was really excited um okay. about the TikTok I thought hey I got a share or have that um yes. That's amazing. But I think my creativity to do the TikTok isn't there, I guess. Um, and figuring out what niche I need to be, because all my on my um, analytics or whatever, the majority of them came from for you is what they were seen on. So it wasn't hashtags or anything. You guys so. say, oh, did you not get out? Okay, that's okay though. Um, okay, so a couple of things that you said. So tell me if I got this down right, because I'm taking notes. Our circumstance, so in the model, in case you guys needed a refresher, it's a circumstance, the thought, the feelings you have about that thought, the actions that that makes you take, and then the results that you get. So we go to your past week, your goal is to grow on Instagram. And you mentioned that, you know, coming off of this last week, you feel a little excited. Um, so I just want to kind of focus on for a second. So the thought, oh, that's a feeling excited is a feeling. <laughs> and that's you. how does it make you feel right so as you're moving into this next week though i noticed something interesting instead of you taking that that feeling of excitement and moving it into your actions of this upcoming week of being like i'm making progress like i'm moving somewhere i had to share and stuff. our immediate thought process so often is to go back to that that negative place that we're so comfortable in we are so good at being in a negative place. We get like this martyr payoff, victim, poetic, you know, like this, oh yeah, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just not good enough. Because you know <laughs> what? If you are actually to feel like I am good enough and I'm gonna put my hat in the ring, like let's do it. I'm gonna jump in the ring. I'm gonna fight as hard as I freaking can. That's a lot more scary, actually. We think that we're taking like the high road or, you know, I would if I could, but I just can't, I just can't. But the truth is we're scared to really throw our hat in all the way because that's scary. So I want, I want to, and I bring it up now because you felt that little bit of excitement from what you accomplished this past week. And you should be so proud of yourself for your accomplishment. Like you set a goal last week and you executed three to four TikToks this past week. And you saw that it was connecting with people and relating with people. The fact that they didn't know you and you just showed up on their for you page and they felt the need enough connection with you in that brief moment to share your content means they connected with you in a very short time. That's quite a compliment. 
like that's a good first impression. You only have a second to do it and you got a first impression. So from your, from those, that needs to be the pervasive thought in your head. The most clean burning fuel that you can have to power your business here is gratitude and happiness with your work that you're currently doing. And it seems super counterintuitive. So to oftentimes there's a voice in our head that says, if I ever get like happy with what I'm doing, I'll get lazy. Like I'll just cruise. Cause obviously if it's work, we don't like the work. We can't be happy with the work. Instead, if what we can do is take the work of what we're doing, the creation, and enjoying that process and, and switching it from that being the drudgery to get to the high of getting the sale or the artist, but instead the high is creation, you're going to be on fire, right? Because you're going to be creating things from a, a positive, clean place and it will attract so much more people. And the byproduct happens to be higher sales and more recruits. And in the meantime, you don't get burnt out because you're living your best life. So I want you to take that excitement that you have for this. And I want like right now, I want you to write down if your thoughts, instead of saying, I have a hard time with my niche and I don't feel like I'm creative enough to make new TikToks and instead switch all of that over into a creation mode to say, I connect with people. I relate to people. The content that I make speaks to people. And, and I, I can guarantee you that as you go throughout your day, like I was, I was freaking changing into my pajamas in my closet when I thought of a, <laughs> of a, t of a real idea. And I'm like, Oh, that's so funny. I'm going to have to do that later. And it's a thing like you, once you have to tell your brain that we are no longer going to sit back and be complacent and hide behind our self-imposed mediocrity or limit that we've set for ourselves. And we're going to create and being in a place of creation breeds more creation and happiness for yourself. That's a happy place to be. It's not a stressed out place. It's not a pressured place. It's a happy place to be. And I don't know if everybody on here is religious or not, but God created us and he gave us the power to create things. And there is true happiness in creation. Like if you can jump in that mode of your life, like it's a muscle. You've given the gift. The more you do that gift, the stronger it gets. Um, so let's do that. Allison, will you do me a favor? Can you kind of tune me out for the rest of this call and instead bust out a piece of paper that has C T F A R on that paper. Your circumstance is to create connections on TikTok. Okay. And then I need you to purposely and intentionally set the thought to I have something to offer people. I connect with people. When I share my light, others benefit. And then you finish the last three. What, okay. how does that make you feel? If you like really honest to goodness, believed those thoughts, how would that make you feel? How would that make you show up? And what would your results be? Okay. Okay. You guys, I've been talking about um, with Jackie a lot the past couple of days. I feel like I in this business, you go through growth spurts, like maturity growth spurts, business maturity growth spurts. I feel like I've gone through a growth spurt in the past couple of weeks. And one of those things that I've realized the most is I had major brain fog about my own potential when it came to social media. It was self-imposed brain fog and my own potential, which is bananas when I, when I look back at it. And I'm talking about little things. The thing that hit me the hardest, hold on one second, hold on. 
The thing that hit me the absolute hardest this last week is not something, um, not something that I was like, nobody like specifically told me to go do this, nothing. But I was looking around at the insights on my phone because I have a business account on Instagram and I was scrolling down. I was just kind of like looking and where did I see this? Oh, here we go. I looked at my audience. Okay. So I'm like, who am I actually talking to? I looked at my audience. I was looking at my followers, how old they are. They're mostly women. That's good. Um, and then I looked at the most active times and I'm like, okay, so they're all on in the middle of the day. Uh, mostly like 12 o'clock is the highest time. I'm like, okay, I should probably like post things around 11 or 12. Like that would be smart. Uh, then I toggled it to days. Guess what day of the week they are on Instagram the very most? It's Sunday. Guess which day I'm not on Instagram the very most? It's Sunday. And so in the past, I would have thought, well, I don't really want Sunday to be my most working day of the whole week. Like, I don't want that. And in the past, I would have been like, see, this is why this is just not meant for me. <laughs> and then I thought, wait a second, why am I not prepping a reel to just post on Sunday? So that all the people who are jumping on are seeing my content that I already created days ago, takes me little to no work to just literally hit post on a saved draft. Why have I not done that before? Why have I not believed in myself and had enough clarity in my vision to find a way to make it work in my life and to get the most bang for my buck? All that is, is a lack of self-belief on my part. I've known about insights for years. I've looked at my insights before, but there was a brain fog blocking myself to keep me playing small over here in a corner to just be like, well, I'm not capable of big things. Like I can't really study my insights because then I might actually have to act and play big. I was hiding, I was protecting myself. I wasn't really going all in. And I know that we've talked about it. Like this is our whole goal is to go all in. So what you've got to do though, is sometimes we see someone else's version of going all in and we think, well, that's not my version of going all in. So I guess I can't go all in, gosh dang it. Because that doesn't fit in my life. I'm sitting in the middle of the desert in an RV with no internet access and not enough power to even run a vacuum cleaner. How am I supposed to go viral on Instagram? Well, I don't know. Maybe no one in their right mind would move to the middle of the desert where they don't have enough electricity to run a vacuum cleaner and people might eat that up. <laughs> and I'm only laughing at Krista because she actually is working really hard. I didn't really, I really don't have to throw her under the brush. I know she's doing great. Um, it's just funny because we, we, it would have been just as easy for Krista to have that exact like conversation with herself as what I just said. Like, I'm just, I'm too bogged down right now. I just can't go all in, but I'm telling you guys so many times when I've gone through a work growth spurt, every time that happens, I'm like, whoa, I'm kind of mind blown how much work I wasn't doing before. When I thought I was doing all the things, I wasn't really hardly doing anything. It wasn't until I actually started to do all the things. I'm like, huh, so this is really all the things. So then it makes me really scared for down the road when I start to do things and I'm like, huh, I guess I thought I was doing all the things before, but I sure wasn't. But you keep leveling up from where, like wherever you are at now, you choose to level up again. So that's what I'm asking you to do starting today until next Friday is figure out what brain fog you can clear, like be intentional about it. Do you guys really, really honest to goodness, have clarity about who you are on social media? I think it's really hard. It's really hard. Um, because you have to really own yourself and what really makes you happy. And that's hard to own because you have to have enough confidence in yourself to validate yourself. You have to be willing to say, I'm going to put this out into the open and no matter what anybody says, I'm gonna hold myself. Like I'm gonna 
I'm going to hold on to my self-worth. I was telling the group yesterday, so I apologize if you were on the call yesterday and I shared this experience, but I've had a bunch of people tell me in the past couple of days that their, their version of vulnerable, they can't share yet because it's too much. It's too vulnerable. And I get it. Don't share that stuff. I have vulnerabilities in my own personal life that I will never share. The, the amount of vulnerable that I am online is what I have approved is okay to share. But whatever you see of anybody sharing online, they've got a whole iceberg worth of SHIT that no one will ever see. And they, that's how it should be. We don't have to air all of our dirty laundry. And so when I was telling the group yesterday, and I don't think, I, I think Carrie jumped back off. So I, I'm pretty sure everybody on here is fresh, but what I was telling the group yesterday was I've had so many people say, well, well, the, like if they were to look at my account, they'd be like, well, I'm not running a farm and I haven't had miscarriages or, you know, whatever excuse you make, like people are going to watch Krista and her journey and be like, well, I'm not living in the desert in an RV or they'll look at Leslie and be like, well, I haven't been a cowgirl wife. Like, I don't know, cowgirl wife. Now you're a lesbian, Leslie. I just made you a lesbian. <laughs> I called dibs first though. Just saying. <laughs> It is so easy to look at what somebody else has like owned for themselves and, and you're attracted to it because it's their confidence. So I had this moment a couple of weeks ago when I got a, that new batch of baby chicks and I'm walking around and I stuck the baby chick in my bra and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is kind of weird. But like the chick was all warm. Like I needed both hands. The chick stayed warm. And then I realized like the chick was like right next to my heart. And I'm like, oh, he probably likes being next to my heart. Like I feel like a little mama hen. And I look down at him and he's like all snuggled up next to me. And I'm like, oh, he's so cute. Like I'm in love right now. And I like got giddy about it. And I thought this would be funny. I should share this on my Instagram. And then, then my internal voice was like, uh, I know Emily Christensen. If you guys know Emily Christensen, she's an Arsenal team. She hates chicken feet. Like there is nothing in the world more disgusting like than chicken feet to Emily Christensen. And I'm like, I can't post that. She's going to know that I literally have chicken feet on my boobs right now. And she will be so grossed out. And then I'm like, how many more people are grossed out by chickens period and birds? Like so many people hate birds. And I'm like, I can't post that. They're going to think I'm gross, but then those though, but if you like, listen, that was something that made me giddy. Like, I loved that there was a tiny little baby, like right next to my heart and he was happy and I was happy and it was weird. I was the weird chicken lady and I'm like, ha ha, I'm the weird chicken lady. And, and, but then I thought I'm holding myself back because I knew that there'd be people out there that would be grossed out by it. And it was, she sent me a screenshot of my stories and she said, Jessica, this is disgusting. <laughs> Like my worst fear came true. And you know what? It was okay because in that moment, I had a choice to own who I was and what I really liked. And people feel the confidence. There's probably so many people, Emily didn't unfollow me that day. And there's probably lots of people who are like, oh, she really put a chicken in her bra. Like that's weird. Like that's taking it too far. That's a weird chicken lady crap right there. But then it's like a freak show that they get to watch and they get to see me being confident while I do it. That's the magic. You don't have to have a chicken to stick in your bra. You don't have to have, have miscarriages. You don't have to have a farm. What you have to do is notice the little things that set you different from other people that actually end up being relatable. Does that make sense? So many times we're looking for this big, beautiful, aha, like, ah, here's your niche on a golden platter. You are now like the ultimate blah, 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 but it doesn't happen. You have little opportunities every day to share a little tiny piece of yourself that makes you get to stand up and own who you are just a little bit more. Your whole goal in creating content is to connect with people. They can't connect with you if you're hiding behind so much smoke and mirrors and you can see it and you can sense it from 10 miles away. 
There's another girl that I follow on Instagram that I secretly like watching because she's trying so hard to project a certain image and you can tell it's not the real her. And can you really connect with someone like that? No, you can't because you don't know who they really are. You've got to let people know who you really are. And the nice thing about social media is that you get to completely control what parts of you they see and what parts they don't. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else. I don't remember. Tell me what you guys' are, thoughts are about that though. Like, can I add something to that, Jess? Yeah. Yeah. So I think what was really cool is like when I finally niched down and I was like, okay, I'm going to do like a roper's wife thing. And there's one lady who she's totally like a roper's wife. And I'm like, oh man, she's like totally got it. And so I'm connecting with her and she's like, you're hilarious. And I'm like, oh yeah, but I'm so jealous of you because you get to team rope and you get to go and do all this stuff. And she's like, oh no, I hope I can like catch you up the next roping so you can teach me how to be a mom. And it like clicked with me. I'm like, this whole time I felt like I was trying to force myself not to just be in that mom mode or we, we try to share different parts of our lives. And then other people are looking at us for totally different things that we, we might share about, but yet we don't even know that they're connecting with us. Like she's looking at me like, wow, how can I be a mom? And I'm looking at her like, oh, how can I do this better? But yet it's just so funny how you can serve people in so many different ways. And had I not shared like the roping wife stuff, then she might not have connected with me about being the mom. So, I mean, I don't know how that really relates to anything, but like, it was no, just kind really of eye opening to me that it was like, I could share about being a team roper's wife, but also being a mom. And even though we connected on that, we can also connect and I can help her on other things. Like just because that's my niche, that doesn't mean that that's the only thing I have knowledge about. And I felt like when everybody was talking about niches for so long, it was like, I am only supposed to talk about that and nothing right. else. But right. it's like, we can connect on other things. That's just what opens the door for us. Yes. Thank you, Leslie. And they've done tons and tons of studies. I think one of the reasons that finding your niche is so hard is because when they study little kids, humans have like almost like a sheep mentality. Like they're going to look around the room and they're going to gauge on what everyone else is doing and they want to be part of the group. Finding your niche requires you to stand up in the middle of the group where everybody is sitting down and be bold and confident about your choice. And that's hard to do. You have to be willing to stand up when everyone else is sitting down. Like you have to be willing to be open about what you like and what you want. And there's also so many times where we're like, well, my niche has to relate to so many people. Like if my favorite drink is blah, 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 I, I'm only going to be able to find the people that also like that. So like yesterday, Christina Pendleton is on our team. She's an absolute doll. She runs the production for her church services. And she said, that's like my life, like, and I feel passionate about it, like, but who am I going to be able to teach on how to do that? Like, nobody's going to do that too. Like, why would I share about that? Cause people can't just pick that up and start producing church services. And I'm like, Christina, are you going to start a farm? Because Christina is one of the first people to watch my Instagram stories and interact on my stories every day. And she's mentioned multiple times on the stories that she loves watching my stories. And so I said, Christina, are you going to start a farm? She said, no. I said, cool. I'm not going to start producing church services either, but I would love to see the behind the scenes. And so many people would. And as we were talking, Sam Williams piped up. She was on the call too. And she said, it's so funny that you mentioned that because she said she actually was scrolling late. She said she's an ultimate online shopper. Like she shops online in person. Like she said, she's just a shopper. Like that, if she, that's all she could do all day, if she wanted to. And I'm like, okay, this is totally opposite of me. And she said that she was scrolling and she saw, cause one girl said her, uh, her passion was cleaning her plant leaves. And I'm like, I love that as a niche. Can you please do that? And Sam, that Sam unmuted herself and she's like, oh my gosh, I was on TikTok and I saw this lady. She was, she had made this steak like a support for a plant. 
And she's like, I thought it was an ad. And I swiped up because I realized I needed that support for my plan. But she said, actually, when I swiped up, it just took me to the girl's Instagram account. And I spent the next 30 minutes binge watching all of her plant videos. <laughs> she's like, she got me. And I was looking so hard of something to buy from her because I connected with her. She bought me, like she got me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you guys hearing this? Are you hearing this? Like, it's the little things that attract us to know because then you feel like you have that like little inside joke with somebody like you know something about them like you feel like you have a personal connection with them um okay that rant was too long because i want to go back okay so we're growing our connections on instagram and TikTok. okay so I want to know somebody spit out another thought. What is a what is a thought that you are having right now that is not serving you? I guess I just always feel like I'm running out of ideas. I don't know if that's a thought, but okay, like it is a thought. It is a thought. Okay, so the thought is I am out of ideas. How does that make you feel? Stuck. <laughs> Stuck. Okay. Okay. So then when you show up to act, when you are creating some type of video, how, what type of content are you making when you feel stuck? Um, I guess I randomly scroll TikTok to try okay. to find more content that okay. like okay. will resonate okay. with me and what I'm about. Perfect. Okay. And so then what kind of results are you getting from spending the majority of your time scrolling for ideas? I guess for me, I feel like I'm wasting my day because I know it sounds dumb, but like, if I don't find what I'm looking for, I just don't create something. I'm just like, well, I didn't find anything. So that was that. <laughs> so do you see how cyclical this is though? So you want to grow your connections, but you say you're out of ideas you feel stuck, you scroll for ideas, you feel like, oh, well, that was a waste of time. And then your thought process just gets thicker, like the plot thickens. Because <laughs> you're right back out. See, I have no ideas. I just wasted my whole day trying to find ideas. I don't have any ideas. I am literally so stuck. Like I can't get unstuck. So let's change it. Let's just change that. Who wants to pipe in and help Jordan change? What thought process could she change I'm out of ideas to how can she intentionally change that thought process to change the end result? I'll tell you one thing. You don't run out of ideas when you are crystal clear on your, your purpose and your focus and your vision. Can I, can I like, cause what you just said, like, you don't even understand <laughs> like how on point that is all of it. Um, so, and it kind of goes on what Jordan was saying a little bit too. So I was right there this past week until I niched down. Um, I lost followers, but I gained more followers by interacting with my niche, like the hashtags commenting on their stuff. And then they binge watched my stuff and was like, oh my, would inbox me. Oh my gosh, you're ho so hilarious. So I haven't wanted to, to really zone in on DIY because I'm not all that great at it but that's literally I do know a lot about it and whatever that's what I do with my time so the idea thing I sat here the other day and I wrote three pages of just real ideas and they're mixed with like DIY and humor because that's what I that's who I am and I figured it out so like you said once you get like the clarity of what you're gonna do um, I literally was crying as I was writing these ideas. And it's funny. She says she was scrolling on TikTok um, because that's what I'll, I will do. But only the days that I'm like my creative self, because some days I don't have that. And then I just binge do it until like my hands hurt because I was like, but what I did was, is I had my idea. So DIY humor, like either or. And then I didn't even look at what videos the people were doing. I just listened to the sound. So mm -hmm. like, I just listened to the sound. I was like, oh my gosh, oh mm -hmm. my God. And then once I went through like six videos and I couldn't come up with any ideas, I was done. So then I felt productive 
and I didn't feel like I wasted my day because I was like, okay, the the mojo's gone. Um, but I've never experienced so much, so many connections, like new girls hopping in my inbox than I did this week. Um, and I don't know why I haven't done this like sooner, like the whole. It's like, okay. It's that, it's, it's that aha moment where you feel like you went through a growth spurt in the business. Like it's a, it, when they say clarity, I feel like we're on the bachelor where we're like, I just need more clarity, but honestly, like you progress a little bit at a time and you get to experience those moments of clarity. And then there's no going back. Cause then yeah. you're like, Oh, I understand. So Jordan, going back to you specifically, you've already grown your followers a lot. So I'm looking at your Instagram Obviously you are amazing at makeup. And I noticed that the number one thing that you have on your bio line, when you say mid-size makeup mentor, okay? So then I should know that by looking at your account, I'm gonna see that you've embraced body positivity and that um, you are awesome at makeup. And I see both of those things. I watched your reels yesterday. I already know that in your first six squares, I know that you've got body positive reels going on. So fabulous. And then I see that you have teen mom to a total boss. That's your number one line. Okay, that does draw me in. And I want to know more about that story. I want to know how old you were when you had a teen mom. What experiences did you have while you were a teen mom? If it's the number one thing that you feel like is passionate for you, you've got to know that you can share lessons that you learned in those life experiences and people can apply those and in, in, in their life, even if they weren't a teen mom. Yeah. Cause so, that, that reel I did with Delilah where I like what, yes. had a fake pregnant belly, that one got like almost 50,000 oh, views. Oh, I didn't see or that 45,000 views. Oh, I just saw the one, the, the energy ones. Yeah. <laughs> so there's one where like, it's me, the, the main picture is a skateboard with me and my daughter's feet. Oh, that oh. one's that one's pretty good, but it talks about like everything I kind of went through. Um, it should say like 42,000 views. The one with me and her dancing went crazy. That one was funny. Cause it's at like 740,000 views. <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. So I feel like, I feel like if you were to do, if you were to just, okay. So in one sentence, like, tell me like, what is your, your goal? And I'll, and I'll let you do that first. But I'll tell you what my what mine ended up being, and it shocked me. But go ahead, Jordan. Tell me, like, if you were to say in like one sentence, like, what is your mission? Like, what, what, what message, overall message, are you trying to portray every time you show up on Instagram? I guess that's a little hard for me because I had so many life experiences that, like, I feel like I try to help people in different ways because, like. I've gone through abuse as a child. I've gone through sexual abuse. I've gone through being a teen mom. I've gone through um, hating everything about my body. I've gone through, so like, I think my main one is just like, I guess if I was to wrap those all into one, it would be how you can get through the hard things. Like you are, you have grit, you are tough. You are, uh, you're an overcomer. Like you've overcome and grown through so many things. Like, and I, that's literal perfection. That, that should be your clarity. And yes, I want, I want that to be it. Okay. <laughs> like I was going to tell you guys, my example was, I love sharing about farming because it kind of makes me feel like a badass. And I love sharing that I'm a runner because every time I run really hard, kind of makes me feel like a badass. I love that I've gone, jumped into a totally girly world of makeup and I'm one of the top leaders. Kind of makes me feel like a badass. And I realized the other day, that's what I want my, that's, that's the feeling I want to feel every time I post anything on my Instagram. And so I'm able to post about makeup. I'm able to post about my farming and I'm able to post about running all with the same kind of vibe. And so Jordan, you just hit it literally on the head. If you can take your different areas to say everything that you've overcome in this life, feeling like you've accepted everything about who you are and your appearance and sharing that, that confidence that comes with that. And then everything else that you've got on your thing. But if everything is coming from that, um, I went through really hard things 
And now I am a shining light and you show up so confident in doing that when you do like what Raquel just said, where instead of, cause there's a different confidence that comes through. There's a different vibe that comes through of whether you, you're, you're getting on these and you're like, I don't know what to do. What can I do? Like, who's of this can I copy? Who is of this can I copy? Who can, I, but instead you're just listening to the sounds and you're thinking about your confident life. And you're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got like exactly what Raquel said. There's a shift because I, I'm looking at your thing and like, you've already done, you've already laid so much foundation work. Like your profile picture is perfect. Your, your, your presets are all like your whole thing is cohesive. You've, you've had your bio, you're, you're actually teaching about what your bio says in your posts. Like you're already doing all that. Now you get to have the experience of feeling like a complete boss of all the things you've overcome. And to kind of say, I've been through so much. I can freaking make videos on Instagram. Like I can make some reels compared to what, what I've been through in life. This is cake. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I not, agree. So, but let's go back to the, the thing really quick. And then we have to jump off back to the model. I want you to send me a picture of your written out model today, Jordan. That's your homework to do today. I want you to go back to the circumstance. You're growing your connections on Instagram. I want you to change the thought of I'm out of ideas to my life experience requires me to share what I've learned. Like I'm doing people a disservice by not sharing all the lessons that I have learned by all of the difficult things that I have grown through. And then see how you feel after that. Then I want you to change the feeling and how it makes you show up on an action piece. And I want you to Take today, take all of today if you need it, but send me a picture of it. You too, Allison. That's both of your guys' homework. I want to see the written piece. Okay. And then one more time, could you tell me it's circumstances, thoughts, feelings? Yeah. yeah. See, and I'll, I'll send it to you in, in, on Messenger too. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so it's C-T-F-A-R. Circumstance. Thoughts feelings, actions, results. The thing that people get hung up on the most is what the circumstance is. They, a lot of times they want to um, assign a feeling to a circumstance, but throughout the next two months, this, uh, when we get on these calls, the circumstance will not change. It will always be, we're trying to grow our connections on Instagram and TikTok then you have to pay real close attention to what thoughts you have about it. So the thought you gave me before is perfect and it's really applicable to a lot of people. Okay, yay, Susie, I'm so glad. She said she had that same moment of clarity last night. Her main focus is her age hasn't defined what I believe I can do. It's perfect, that's awesome, I love it. All right, you guys, I hope you have a fabulous weekend. An amazing Friday. I love you all. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to set new goals for this upcoming week. And so you can report on those numbers next week. Bye.